condition doesn't always matter in these items. We still sell a lot of damaged goods for good money. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about some items that many people just walk right by for what most people would assume is a valid reason. Condition-wise, most everybody wants something in tip-top condition, the best condition you can get, because usually those items sell for the most money, which is a true statement. Now, some items, though, that are scarcer or don't show up very often, though, will still sell for decent money, even in not-so-great condition. We're going to look at just a few, just so I can give you a few examples. Many times, some of the items that I do get, um, I'll get for free because they're damaged, destroyed, they're bent, they're missing a corner. There's something wrong with the item. But if you know enough about certain things, certain areas, certain items, you can look past that because you know that those items just don't show up very often for various reasons. And even in lesser grades, lesser conditions, they'll still go for a ton of good money. Like, let's say, Superman Comics number one. Without the cover, you can still get thousands of dollars for something like that. Amazing Fantasy 15 or something like that as well. No cover, back cover, missing pages. Any of that sort will still sell. As long as the issue itself or the item at hand carries an intrinsic value to begin with. As long as there's some money involved in it. So, even if I see a stack or I'm at a sale and there's just a bunch of junk or ripped up papers and stuff, I look through those for a very good reason because it makes us hundreds of dollars every month by picking up this sort of thing. Most of the time the stuff is dirt cheap uh, or it's given to me. Much of the stuff I'm going to show you in just a second here is stuff that we didn't pay a dime for. It was given to us along with other items we actually did purchase. These items are damaged goods, goods that most people would never in their right mind mess with. Most all of this sort goes in the trash for that reason. Or somebody will blow it out in a huge lot and just basically give the stuff away because they don't realize that you can still sell it even in lesser grades. A lot of the items that I do list do have issues with them. I don't really worry about that due to the age of the item, the scarcity, how frequently something shows up online. If something doesn't show up very often at all and you do have a damaged one, chances are you're going to be able to sell that as long as, again, there's collectors in that field. Now, this is a tobacco card, a very damaged tobacco card. It's been trimmed on the top. It has issues on the bottom. It has major issues on the back, as you can see. Totally trashed out. Discoloring in there looks like maybe from tobacco setting it out at even. Uh, this is typical on some of these earlier cards. People cut them up, uh, damaged over the years. They trimmed off the company names as a child because they just wanted the character on it. Now, this is Geronimo, an extremely well known, well documented Native American chief. Uh, and I did sell it for almost 30 bucks with shipping in it, even damaged like this. Now, obviously, a mint condition card would have sold for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It's just not something that shows up. I mess with tobacco cards a lot, even in bad condition, because some of them are so scarce that I still can get four or $500 for damaged cards, again, depending on the card or the item specifically. Now, this one's an advertising card for Jersey Coffee, and this shows a cemetery in New Orleans. Now, cards from New Orleans don't show up very often. There were many of them printed, but a lot of them were released in the general area. There's been floods, hurricanes, and all sorts of other issues that have wiped out many sections of New Orleans since this card was printed in the 1880s. So there's not many of them around. Now, I do mess with trading cards of all types. This is a trading card from a coffee company. It's a series of cards. There's 50 or so with this one here. I still sold it for the price you see there. It's missing a corner. It has multiple rips on it. Creases, dirt, damage, as you can see, it's just a terrible condition card. I got this for free as well as a bunch of other ones that I have been able to sell for this sort of money. It's not a fortune. I didn't make a ton of money off of it. But profit after all my fees, after labor, after everything else, I'm still making nine bucks for something I didn't pay for. Something that was given to me because of the condition of the item. 
I have nothing into it. It shipped quickly, no complaints. So, you know, you can see the issues with it. Just like this one, another coffee cart, it's got a hole in it. There's some other issues. It's got staining. The back's got some issues. Again, 15 bucks out of that. So $11 or so profit after everything is said and done, fees, labor, everything else. So even damaged, many of these items can still sell. This one's got a cut, a section out, a rip up there, and some other issues to it as well. I, I really don't care about some of those issues if it's the right thing, the right image, the right item. Trade cards do go well. And if you want the whole set, you've got to take what you can get. This would be a filler for somebody else until they find a better one. I'm fine with selling fillers for people's collections. Again, because I got nothing into the items and I'm still making a decent return on that investment. After everything's all said and done, another $11 back to my pocket to the bottom line. After all of my expenses are out. This sort of thing turns up for me in mass bulk quantity many times. I have bought from other sellers from their junk bin. It's another area. If I go to a show, there's almost always several sellers who have stuff that have damage to it. And this one's a heavily creased card. Somebody had almost folded it in half. There's a secondary crease over there. This is out of someone's quarter bin, their damaged goods bin. And I still sold it for top dollar uh, for this sort of card from this town, from this area. In this area of Michigan, there's not a ton of collectors, but there's enough. This is an old, early card. The same person bought another one from the same purchase. Again, this is multiple creases. It's got some rips, corner folds, bottoms damaged. This cost me a quarter. There's another crease going up here on this corner as well. It, it's well shown, so you can see all the issues with the card. It's stated that there's condition issues as well. I still got top dollar for it for this card. So condition isn't always everything. Now, of course, I'd rather have stuff that's, you know, obviously tip top shape, near mint plus, near mint, the best I could find it. But this stuff is almost given to me all of the time. I can pick this stuff up constantly for almost nothing day in and day out if I dig and walk around and check out my normal routine sources. So this is a lot of money I make from this stuff. This is a recent sales. These are uh, damaged goods to anybody else nobody else usually lists them uh it depends on the card it depends on some other aspects of it this one has the whole top corner rounded off it's missing quite a bit of the corner you can see the issue up there it's all rounded down it's been slightly trimmed it's got some damage to the back i, I still sold it for good money so for a damaged card, I'm still getting pretty decent money out of it. It depends on the card number and things like that. Like a card number one for something even sets into the 50s, 60s, 70s. Card number one is almost always worth more than all of the rest other than the checklists. Card number one is the top of the deck, the top of the stack. It's usually damaged first if somebody rubber bands it together. It's going to take the brunt of the harm. Same thing with the checklist. People actually use the checklists. So many times these are cards that are discarded. They just look awful. I don't care if it's called a filler to one person or not. People buy this stuff. Now this is segments of things right here, but the imagery itself, and it's tiny, these did sell for 15 bucks basically. It's missing some sections of the whole piece up here. Uh, they're just segments of things. It doesn't matter at all to me. If you can graphically display them nicely, if you have some good keywords uh, for them also, they do extremely well. Now this is a piece of Dresden and the imagery isn't the greatest, at least the, the quality of the main image until you zoom in on it. Uh, it's missing most of the Dresden uh, silver finish to the top of this. Now Dresden is the metallic coating that goes on paper back in those days. It was done in Dresden, Germany. That's why you'll see that term used a lot, but it's got some issues with it and it still did sell for 15 bucks on this one. So. Even in the condition, if you know the items themselves, the delicateness of something, the scarcity, how many of these survived is another issue with it. This is just a fabric label from a general store anywhere in the country from the 1880s or so. They would have written down how many yards the person got. There's a mark space for yards, and they would have written down how much they bought. This is the exact same thing like if you go to Walmart or Fabric Circle or something like that. They're going to give you a little printout with the yard value, how much it costs per yard, 
and how many yards you have. It's the exact same thing, but this is just 140, 150 years old. So knowing that this item would have never been kept, this is just something someone discarded in not so great condition, it still holds value because of that. It's a discardable. 150 years from now, for all we know, a wrapper from a McDonald's uh, double cheese or something may be worth a couple hundred bucks because there's none on the planet available anymore. So many items I'm fine with lesser quality. They're scarcer. They're, there's a reason why they still hold a value. Rounded corners on labels, uh, rips, curls, other damage, it, it doesn't matter. I still can get 20 bucks out of them, like this label here, plus shipping. It doesn't matter, depending on the item. This is something scarce. Hotel New Yorker, there's not many graphic, art deco, uh, address labels left. People would have used these. When the hotel went under, this stuff would have just been discarded more than likely. Now, this example here sold for $17.50. This was in a ripped-up section of a magazine from about 1870 or 80. It had most of the magazine gone, and I just cut out the ads that carried some value, and boom, up they go. There's printing on the back of this. This is just a piece of paper cut out of a ripped-up magazine from that time frame. But it's advertising. It has neat artwork. It carries an intrinsic value because there's none of these hardly left, especially ones that would be individually available just for the brand that you're looking for. Most people aren't going to cut up a good magazine because it would still hold a little bit of value. So something like this, that's why it's still sold. That's why it sold for $17.50. This has been up for a very long time. It's an old image, not a great picture. These I would scan nowadays, and it's still sold. You know, so damaged or not still carries a value for us. Damaged items make us hundreds a month. No exaggeration. I make hundreds of dollars every month from other people's discarded junk just like this. You just have to know more than they do to be good at this, to be able to do this, to be able to sell these items. Here's another label, just like the fabric one I showed you before. Same basic principle. It has issues. It has bending, creasing. The top is probably missing. It has corner damage. It's not all there. It's still sold for the price you see it. Because it's something scarce, these don't show up. The copyright's dead on this. Somebody can use this and reprint their own labels off of this. So there's so many reasons why damaged goods can still sell and still make you hundreds of dollars a month. And stuff like that doesn't cost you hardly anything. Or zip zero, in my case, for many of these items. They're freebies for me. Here's another item I paid zip zilch nothing for, just at some random place where I was at. They were discarding a bunch of stuff. They were sorting out the good stuff. This was going in the trash. It was going in the trash because the top right corner is gone. It has creasing. There's some color peels. It was folded as well when they got it. And I did sell this one for 25 bucks in this condition, just like you see it. They didn't think it was worth a single solitary dime. I asked them how much for it. Didn't offer it to say, hey, give it to me. I asked, how much would you want in it? Hey, you can have it. That was the response I get a lot on damaged stuff like this. So I don't mind getting the low-lying fruit, so to speak. So all this stuff is just sitting around there in lesser conditions, and everybody walks by it because of the condition again. Nobody thinks a ripped-up label missing part of it that's folded, that has other issues and some color loss is going to be worth anything. But knowing that something like this, there's so few of them printed in the first place, and how many of those that were printed would still be around right now? This would have been stuck on their case that held their roller skates, uh, maybe stuck on a book or something like that. No one's hanging on to these thinking, oh, it's going to be worth something. Whoever had this went there and skated there. The person who bought this skated there as a child and wanted it as a memento. You know, there's many reasons that even if it's damaged, you can still sell it. So don't always negate or look the other way when you see items that aren't in good condition. Just be careful on what you're buying and how much you're spending on them. It's the same profit margin I get on better items. I'm just getting a little less for it, but I have nothing into it. It takes moments to photo or scan something like this, moments to list it, and moments to ship it. Storage is easy. I can store hundreds of these in a bin in a small, small area. But anyway, that's what I got for you today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
get trapped with my walls of evil. Oh, yeah? Bashasaurus bashes evil away. Skeletor, He-Man figures, and Bashasaurus vehicle each sold separately. Bash away. Bashasaurus, Bashasaurus. Next bash is on you, Bo-Face. Yeah! Bashasaurus, new from the Masters of the Universe collection. Not for use with some figures, each toy sold separately. From Mattel.